Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this video, we describe some of the tension control challenges for lightweight or thin webs. We learned in Web 101 that tension changes going over every roller, including idler rollers. This is key to understanding this video. Here, we are going to expand on this with a simplified example where the bearing drag is about 5 newtons or about 1 pound. Inertia, which is seen only during speed changes, will be twice that. Thus, in steady state run, the tension will rise by 5 newtons on every single idler roller. Recall, this is because web tension supplies the power to turn idler roller bearings. Now, if we speed up, we have the ever-present tensioning of 5 newtons, to which we add 10 newtons more as the web pulls metal up to speed, for a total of 15 newtons. The opposite happens during deceleration, where we have 5 minus 10, or a minus 5 newtons of tension change. In severe cases, the web can actually go slack during a machine slowdown. In the following examples, we will simplify the problem by only looking at the steady state run condition. As we will see, that may be problem enough, and speed changes will only make this worse. The world is full of constraints. One of them is that your machine will likely have idler rollers. In this example, we will have 12 idlers with the 5 newtons of drag each. Next, we may be running a light web. In this example, we will assume that we need a tension of 40 newtons entering a fussy process, such as perhaps a laminator nip as shown here. The next series of examples gives a simplified down web tension profile. Tension changes over every roller and is constant within the spans between rollers. If we pick up 5 newtons of drag on each idler roller, then all of the needed tension is supplied by the drag of only 8 rollers. Thus, even if the unwind tension were set to zero, we still couldn't get what we need. While moving the load cell or dancer closer to what might be a more important location is not necessarily a bad idea, it doesn't really change a thing unwind tension would still be zero. Obviously, with these two examples, we are not anywhere close to making things work, no matter where we put the load cell or dancer. Since the root cause of the problem is that the idler roller bearings are stealing tension, we could put power in with a motor to help things along, as shown here. We see that we now achieve a 40 newton tension at the process. This is good. We see that we now have an unwind tension of 20 newtons. This may be good enough. However, what we don't see, unless we look closer, is that the greater than 2 to 1 tension change going over the driven roller may be too high for most rollers. This, as we learned in Web 101, will be cause for slippage and loss of control. Traction capacity can be calculated by designers and troubleshooters by the band break equation, which is now, conveniently, an Abbott app. Of course, you could add a nip for traction. However, the nip would increase initial costs. The nip would also increase ongoing maintenance costs, especially if one of the rollers is rubber covered. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, you will make your machine more wrinkle prone as we learned in Web 101. The nip will make a machine quite intolerant to less than perfect rollers and less than perfect webs. Of course, we could always throw more money and more motors at the problem. However, stay tuned for the next clip and we will offer a more complete set of options for running lightweight webs. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical series. I also want to give a shout out and a great big thanks to fellow web handler Ron Lynch, who so graciously allowed me to borrow the inspiration for this video. 
Ron gave a much more worthy version of this at the 2013 AIMCAL web conference.